everybody welcome back to the shop so today I thought I would give you a nice little shop tour for 2022 uh, this is the first time I've ever done a shop tour I've never done one before but I really feel like my shop is in a good place right now and I thought I'd show it off to you guys show you my configuration and also show you some tools that I may have bought over the past couple of years that I didn't show on my channel and so uh, let's go inside and check it out So this camera makes my shop look a lot bigger than it actually is. My shop is a 25 foot by 25 foot space. It's not uh, small by any means, but it's really not that big either. It's just the equivalent of a two car garage. So as you walk through the door and look directly to your right, I have all of my scrap metal storage over here. I've got my hydraulic press right here. It's only uh, it's a little 12 ton. Uh, but it's great for changing out ball joints and doing small work. I got my parts cleaner right here, which tends to accumulate stuff because I don't use the parts cleaner that often. Continuing on this wall here, I've got my drill press. And then the this giant um, miter saw station, which I never really did any video on. And it's never, ever quite complete. My miter saw is missing. It's over at my parents' house because I'm doing some finish work over there right now. And all of my storage for just parts and um, supplies. Everything is stored in this miter saw station or on the shelving above it. It's kind of a catch-all for everything, but there is a little bit of, um, there is a little bit of a method to the madness. You know, I've got my solvents and cleaners right here. I've got my glues, like my caulks and my and my spray glues and all my other glues are over here. I got some paint and paint thinner, paint, 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 stain, more paint. There's lots of paint. Up top, I've got parts for future projects and for existing projects. As you can see, I've got my belt grinder parts here, which is a future project. I've got some fiberglass with resin for any types of plastic repairs that I do. I've got a gas tank to a 1966 Honda that I'm working on. I've got an electrical enclosure for a PLC project that I'm doing. I've got paint sprayer, the essential music along with the nice speakers and down there is the subwoofer. Here is my new dust collector that I just recently did a video series on and all the associated piping and and fittings and everything. The goal is to eliminate the need for my shop vac with this dust collection unit right here. My shop vac is also over at my parents house because I'm doing work there. So along this back wall I've got my jointer which I've done a review on on this channel. I've got this nice little cart that I built that carries my uh, my rigid uh, drum sander at the bottom and my DeWalt planer at the top. And it's on wheels. And the wheels aren't that great, but they, they are good. They're good enough. 14 inch bandsaw behind that that is also on wheels. 17 inch bandsaw right here that is not on wheels. It is a stationary tool. My big drum sander. Um, that is also on wheels and the idea here is that I'll be able to wheel all these ones that are on wheels I'll be able to wheel them out to the center of this floor right here and have an adapter to hook it up into my dust collection system up there in the ceiling all of my good wood storage is on this back wall in this rack system um, it's partially vertical and partially horizontal just depending like the long pieces are vertical and the short pieces are horizontal um, it's kind of segregated by species, so I've got my walnut over here, and I've got my cherry and walnut here. More cherry is stacked up over here. A bunch of cedar and kind of some scrappy wood in the back. Here is a panel goods cart that I built a long time ago that I never filmed, and I just needed to get the, the, the cart built, and all of my panel goods are kind of stacked up in this cart. This thing probably weighs a thousand pounds there's so much stuff stacked into it <clears throat> down here on the floor is kind of the the land of the misfit tools I don't have a place for these tools right now I've got a bag full of saws hand saws that I I really only use that Japanese saw off the top there 
And then I have this mortising tool that I don't have a home for yet. I will eventually find a place to put it or store it or maybe make a stand or a cart for it. But right now it's just sitting on the floor there. <clears throat> Here's a, a small inverter style uh, generator that is a future project. There's a common theme with this shop, lots of future projects. Here's my first toolbox that I bought a long time ago, and right now it carries a lot of my uh, automotive cleaning and lubricating supplies. Starting on this wall, here's one of my two large toolboxes, and both of these toolboxes pretty much hold all my mechanics tools and everything I use to work on vehicles. Um, as you can see, I've got... I don't have brand loyalty, as you can see. I've kind of got a whole bunch of different types of batteries and... I mean, um, I should stick with one. I know that's the smart way to go. Uh, my 20 volt stuff is, my big stuff is mostly DeWalt, but I, my 12 volt stuff is Milwaukee. Over here, I've got a lot of metal working supplies as well. I've got my furnace, I've got a belt grinder. Um, you know, in front of all this is the Beetle, and I recently did a video on the Beetle. And so here it is, this is the state that it's in, and it'll stay in this state until t temperatures warm up just a little bit, because it's cold. This is a fairly new 60 gallon air compressor that I've never done a video on. And I, I wanted to do a video on these because as I did my research, I found out that it really doesn't matter what brand name, what brand you buy, for the most part, whether it's like <clears throat> Cobalt or Husky or DeWalt or this Black Diamond brand or another brand called Sanford. All of these, what you would call entry-level 60-gallon air compressors are all made in the exact same factory. And don't let that Made in the USA tag fool you. That tag is legit, but it only applies to the tank. Everything else is sourced from China. Um, these are good. These are great for what you use them for. They're, they're serviceable. They're good units. But there can be a wide um, span, I guess, of prices for these. And so this was on the lower end. I think I paid $300 to $350 for it brand new at a local farm and fleet store. And then you go up to like the DeWalt ones, which are like six or $700. And the crazy thing is... They're all the exact same, so keep that in mind if you're out looking for one of these. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you buy, they're all going to be the same, so you might as well look for the best price as you go. I did a small video on my MIG welder here. Um, I did get a gas tank for it, and I really like that welder, and I, I really like welding with gas. Uh, it's a lot better than the uh, flux core welding wire, because the flux core stuff makes a huge mess and it's really hot. I have a video on this. This is a sandblaster that I, I bought for 50 bucks and I refurbished and uh, it works really great as well. And <clears throat> that's the engine to my Beetle right there. And that brings us back to the door. So um, the, only, the only things that I haven't shown you in the shop are basically the two centerpieces of this shop. And uh, that is my Three horsepower saw stop PCS table saw. I love this saw. It is the smoothest, best made saw I've ever used in my life. <laughs> and um, it was a great addition to the shop and I just absolutely love it. I don't have enough good things to say about it. This is that router table that I picked up. Um, the router in it is amazing. The router plate is amazing. It's made by woodpeckers. It's great. I don't like this table, so I'm going to, in a future project, I'm going to uh, put this router plate and install it in this uh, wing here on my table saw. And then over here, um, I've got my woodworking vise. I did a video on that. This is my giant Wilton bullet vise um, that I got for a steel from a, an old uh, retired railway worker. And... Um, I need to restore it. It is. Um, it needs the bushings replaced in it. It's a little loose. Um, this is a great vise. Anybody that knows anything about these Wilton vices know that this is a great vise. 
and that's going to be another future project. And last but not least is my workbench. Uh, I love this workbench because it's height adjustable. It is a hydraulic table. You've seen it before if you've watched any of my other videos. Um, so this is great uh, for woodworking. I can make it an outfeed table for any of my uh, mobile tools and I can adjust the height to whatever the height needs to be. I can adjust the height to match the height of the outfeed table so I have a large work surface if I want to do that. I can put my motorcycles up on it and bring them up to working height. This is a great table. If you ever have a chance, if you ever find a good deal on a used hydraulic table, I would say don't hesitate. Go out and get one. Get it if it's available. So thanks for sticking with me through this shop tour. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. I read every comment. I don't respond to every comment because a lot of comments aren't very friendly. But, um, you know, if you ask me a question or, you know, if you have something nice to say, I'm happy to respond to you. And um, also, I have some goals for 2022. Um, I don't know about the channel growth. I don't know what's going on with YouTube. They don't seem to be very friendly to smaller channels anymore, which is fine. I kind of just do my own thing anyway. But I do have a couple 3D printers that I want to give away this year. And I have a couple milestones in my mind that at once I reach those milestones, I will give them away. So stick around. Stay tuned for that. Go ahead and uh, click that subscribe button so you can... Um, be kept up to date with what I'm doing. I <clears throat> have an Instagram and I'll show, I'll put it in the screen here, but I'm not really active on Instagram, but maybe if I get some more followers, it'll motivate me to be a little bit more active on there. So I hope you like the shop tour. Thanks everybody for watching this video and sticking around and hanging out with me. And um, as you can see, I have a lot of future projects. And so uh, hopefully 2022 will be a very productive year. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.